Shea Bear 1000 here. Today, we got a flat tire on this little bicycle. Now it holds air for a couple hours and then goes flat. I don't want to sell it to somebody like that. Let's patch the tube. Okay, so these the back tire holds air. It's still got air in it. Uh, these front tire, these front wheels are easy to get off of these things because you don't have to adjust the brakes or you don't have to adjust the uh, chain. You don't have to deal with the brake arm and all that. So this is just a 15 millimeter wrench on this one. Just going to loosen that up. You don't have to take that nut clear off of there. Same way with this side. There's little nuts in here. Sometimes on the inside you may have to hold one of them. But usually it works with your fingers. Okay, so now it's got these little keepers on here. I'll show you here in just a second. They go in these holes here. I don't know if you can see that. Just a, just a little keeper that goes in that hole, keeps the wheel from coming, coming off if your, if your wheel gets loose. But so, there's one. You can take the nuts clear off if you want. I just usually leave them on so they don't get lost. So that's all there is to that. You can see it's flat, but it will hold air for two or three hours before it goes flat. So it's got a small leak in it. So we're going to patch it. I'm going to take it over here. We're going to put it on the uh, on this table over here, and I'll show you how to get these off here. You got to be careful because you don't want to pinch your tube, put another hole in it. Okay, guys. I got to do this again. I already had it off, and uh, I forgot to hit record. Now, we need to pry this tire off of here, but you have to be real careful if you're using a screwdriver. I like to use wrenches whenever possible because, as you can see, these wrenches aren't as pointy as a screwdriver. So, what I like to do is I like to start with the wrench and get it up in there. Make sure you're not pinching your tube. Same way with this. Now on the bigger ones you can use two wrenches on the bigger tires. Believe it or not, the bigger bicycle tires are easier to change than these. So just be real careful not to pinch your tube and put another hole in it. But if you look down in there you can see if you've got your tube or not. Usually once you get it like that, if you got more strength than I do in my arms right now, you can usually pop it and they'll start and it'll come clear out around for you. But I can't do that on this one. And like I said, these smaller tires are actually harder to get off than the bigger ones, but then you can just go around. And pull it off. Now you don't have to take the whole tire off, of course, unless you're changing the tire. So if you're just changing the tire, then you're going to skip a step. Reach in there, you know, pull your valve stem out, out of that hole, and just pull it out. Okay. Now if you're going to take the whole tire off, you just, just take it and put it in there like that and pry your tire off. So, now what you can also do is put a little tape 
around your screwdriver or your wrench. If you got nice wheels, you don't want to scuff them up. If you got pretty chrome wheels, you don't want to scratch them. This is not the case here. It's just an old bicycle for a kid. You know, I'm going to be selling for like five bucks to a kid that needs it, or if someone, if a kid really, really needs it, I'll give it to him. But so go over there. Also, inside of here, you'll see a piece of rubber that goes all the way around inside there. That's to protect your your uh, your tube as well. If you got some rust in there, try to clean it out best you can. Make sure there's no dirt or anything in there. And you should be good. Make sure that rubber's lined up with that hole. And so let's set this over here. Here's our patching kit. Uh, you can take this in the house. You can, um, you know, you can shoot a little air in it, take it in the house, put it in the sink, put it in the bathtub, whatever. But I'm going to do it out here. I'm going to uh, um, go get me a bucket of water. And what we're going to do is dip it in. We're going to look for some bubbles. That'll be our leak. So I don't see any big tears or anything. I don't see any fresh nicks. So I know I didn't nick it. So, it, But it does have a slow leak somewhere. It could just be leaking out of the valve core right there. But let me go get a bucket of water and I'll be back with you. Okay. I got me a little pan of water here. It's just a little bowl. Uh, well, it's a pretty good size bowl, but it's just a bowl. Now I'm going to shoot some air into this tube. A lot of guys will tell you, put soapy water in there. That doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to see bubbles blowing just in water like this. Now, if you're checking a tubeless tire, yeah, you're going to want to rub some soapy water on. Uh, the soap will cause a big bubble this you'll be able to see it without any soap in fact sometimes the soap really doesn't help much now I can feel air coming out there it is right there but I'll show you see that right there's our hole right there and what I hate is it's on these ribs, so we're going to have to really clean these, get these ribs flat, okay? When we clean them off, let's see if I can. But there, yeah, see? See the bubbles? That's our hole. Now I'm going to check for other holes too. Once we patch it, I want to check for more holes. You'll see it immediately. Even a little tiny hole will show up. Check, check your valve, your valve core. There's no bubbles coming out of there, so that's good. So it looks like the only hole we got is that one there. But now I like to leave a little air in these when I uh, when I patch them. But we're going to scuff this up. And we're going to use a small patch on that. Okay. So let me get my stuff ready. And I'll be back with you in just a second. So what you got, you got this little deal here. And you're going to want to lightly scuff this area all the way around where your patch is going to go. We're not going to need a great big patch. So I'm going to go with, a, with the smallest one we have here. There's the hole. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the hole. That's going to cover plenty of it, okay? So I'm going to scuff this up. All the way around where that patch is going to go. You can also mark it in case you're afraid of losing it. This one I can see pretty good. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little glue on this, a little uh, rubber cement here. Just take that and you puncture it open. But you got to be careful because if you're squeezing the tube when you do that, a whole bunch of shit will come flying out at you. So you would think they'd have an 
easier way of doing this, but see it's not even puncturing it. Jesus. I may have to get me a nail or a screw or something. Uh, there it goes. See, that's what I was talking about. See that? That's why I hate when they do that shit. Alright, so we're gonna. There's our hole right there. I know you probably can't see it, but I'm just gonna smear some of this glue around. Now I've left a little bit of air in here so that way it's a little easier to work with. And sometimes once you get the glue on here you can't see your hole anymore. So let's get our patch ready. You have to be careful not to touch the glue or the sticky stuff on the patch. Okay, now we'll find our hole. Sometimes what you can do is you can shoot a little air in there if you lose your hole like we just did. You'll see the you'll see the glue come up out of the hole. So there it is right there. So let's get our patch here. Try another patch. I got that one all dirty. And they're not expensive, but kind of they are. This was $1.98 at Walmart for this patch kit. You only get five patches. So you want to let that get to a dull shine. And once it does, once you get it to a dull shine, that's when you want to put your patch right over your hole. You're going, a lot of guys will hot patch it. What you do when you hot patch it, now I'm going to let the air out. What you do when you hot patch it is you actually light the glue on fire for a second. But I usually don't, I don't have an issue doing that. I don't have to do that with tubes, but you can. Um, but normally when I'm hot patching something, it's going to be a tubeless tire. Okay, so I let some air out. So now we're going to. We're going to push real hard down on that. Now you use the back end of this now, the flat spot, and you're just going to want to rub that from the inside out. And get that glue to come out. Get all that excess glue to come out. Okay? And rub it pretty good, especially if you got these, these ribs on here like we do. Just want to keep rubbing it. Just like that. Now what I like to do is Okay, and then you're going to after after your glue sets you're going to want want to let it dry. So I'm going to let it dry for about 30 minutes. I don't think it takes that long. Um but see that that patch kind of got screwed up so it's not really going to be any good anymore maybe for an emergency that's something that's not real important okay now i'm going to let this set um it says on the instructions scrape off excess remove foil back and apply patch Side facing up. 
secure patch remove plastic and press firmly around the edges it doesn't say to let it set but I like to let it set so I'm gonna give it 30 minutes to uh, for the glue to dry and then we'll peel this plastic off and then we'll check it for leaks all right we've got our patch on here show you like that now we're going to check the patch and the patch seems to be seems to have a little leak right there well, maybe not okay we have another hole in the tire right or in the in the tube right there right there you can't see this one so we're gonna have to put a patch on here right there them bubbles right there so we need to patch that and dry this off I can't even see where it is so I know it wasn't a pinch so what we're going to do is we're going to smear some glue around there look for the glue to bubble up sometimes you can feel it on your face it's right in here I'm going to shoot, okay, there it is, right there's the hole. See the bubbles blowing? Right there. So, now let's get, let's get a medium-sized patch. If we can here. And, uh, I did get the plastic off that off that other patch as you've seen. Squeeze a little bit so we can find the air hole. Let me shoot a little air in it so we can get a bubble to come up out of there. such a small hole the glue might have sealed it but we're going to go ahead and stick this patch on here where I think it was because now I can't find it Now I'm going to let the air out so I can lay it flat, squeeze all that glue off of there. Okay. more air out of here that was such a tiny hole that glue probably sealed it up but since I got the glue on there and I've got a patch patching it Well, these patches suck. Or the glue sucks, one of the two. 
I keep forgetting I got you guys beside me. I keep forgetting I made that thing so I can work directly behind the camera. It's right in there on the desk and I keep forgetting I made that. Alright, so I'm going to set this over in the sun and we're going to let it dry. Let the glue dry for, I don't know, 15-20 minutes. This wasn't that bad of a hole, so see, as you can see right there, it's already really starting to dry there. But I'll be back with you guys in a second. I'm going to try to get this plastic off of here too. I don't know if I'll be able to or not. I got it off the other one, so most of it. All right, so say that glue just ain't drying. All right, let me let me let this dry. I may put a little weight on it. I'm gonna let it dry in the sun, and then I'll get back with you and we'll check it and see if we fixed the leak. All right, so we got our new patch on there. I got most of the plastic off, but it just doesn't want to come off without peeling the without peeling the patch off. So this these patches may not work. I don't know. Now let's check. Oh, you guys. No bubbles. All right, we got it. There's plastic on there. All right, looks like we got them all. I don't see any more bubbles. Check the valve again. No bubbles. All right. Now let's let the air out. Damn it. And we're going to put the tube in the tire. Now hopefully we won't we won't pinch the tube. All right. get this started up in here try not to twist that tube try to keep it in you know in the uniform shape like that now we've got to get our valve stem into that hole sometimes you can look on the other side you can see it starting down in there push we go just a little bit pull it down through so I like to leave a little air in them tubes because it helps it helps hold the the tube from getting pinched now it doesn't work every time but it does help it and then I'm just gonna squeeze this around here and then we're gonna add air to it now once we add air to it you may hear a little bit of air escaping from around the tire. That's normal. That's just filling up that space in there. Okay? So don't be alarmed if you hear that. So I'm just going to very gently go around here. Make sure you're not pinching the tube. Because I have pinched the tubes before. And I've done it in car tires. I know every tube's tubeless nowadays, but back in the day when I was running derby cars, like I said, it uh, um, I ran tubes in them. Okay. Now let's shoot some air in these in this thing. So you can hear some of the air escaping. Just for that, just for a second. 
I don't hear anything. Feels nice. Now I don't know if this is printed on the side how much air this takes. But make sure you kind of get it. You may have to work with it. There's like a line around here. You can see that little line maybe. Try to get it even with the rim. Inflate to 40 PSI. I'm just going to hit it on the ground a couple of times. That's not a necessity, but I like to do that. Get it as straight as I can, and it's not going to fit in here. But pretty confident we've got we got it. So let's check our pressure. It's got 20 pound. Add some more air to it. There's about 30, about 37. That's good enough. All right. So we're good to go there. Now let's go put this on the bicycle. Okay, guys. So it's been about 30 minutes. And uh, I let it sit a while just to make sure it wasn't going to lose any air. And I checked the pressure again. Still at 37. So, we're good to go. Make sure these get in those little holes there, if you've got these. And tighten them up. Good to go now I can't ride this because it's too small but all right so guys that's how you put a tube uh, a patch on a tube uh, I know it was kind of chopped up uh, Bruno has seizures and he was in the house and uh, but I had the garage door open the man door and the big door and he come out and he was like he was having trouble breathing so I had to cut a couple times and go check on him and make sure when he does that when he has a seizure you just gotta talk to him he hasn't had one in a while so uh, so that's why it was kinda kinda chopped up this this video but you get the idea just let let the glue dry and if that plastic stuff don't come off uh, a lot of times when you go put air in them to check it they'll start peeling off but if it don't don't worry about it on you know especially on a bicycle it'll it'll be fine so we got it like i said it's been about 30 minutes it's still at 37 pound uh i put 37 in the rear tire before we started patching the front one and it's still at 37 pounds so we're good to go so all right guys thanks for watching uh stay tuned for some more videos this weekend and uh yeah uh what is today thursday so you guys enjoy the rest of your week hope you have a great weekend and we'll chat at you soon shea bear the myth the man the legend thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate subscribe and uh, check out my patreon page you better now you are better now you better you better yeah he's good now he's all right now yeah i know hey give me a high five you have five? Come on. <laughs> no. I'm filming you. Yeah, he's better now. Good boy. Hey, good boy. Hey, good boy. Yeah, tail wagon. Yeah. Alright, good boy.